Hey everyone, welcome back to Shop Life. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to upgrade your front brakes on your E46 to the 330 brakes. So 330 brakes are the biggest brakes that you can get for the E46 without going up to the M level. So 330 brakes are directly bolt-on on the 325s and it's a very good upgrade, especially for the front. The rears do require a little bit more work since the e-brake and everything is a little bit different. But as far as the fronts go, all you need is the 330 brake calipers, the caliper carriers, new pads, new rotors, as well as the pad sensor. Uh, I also recommend replacing your brake lines at the same time. Preferably going with stainless steel, it is a better option, but you can also just use OEM replacements. And by this time, if you do have an E46, Chances are that your brake lines are starting to dry rot, so double check all your brake lines, make sure they're all good. You don't want to be stranded anywhere without brakes. So it will be a good time to change them out even if you're going with OEM replacements. Anyways, let's, that's enough talking, let's get on with the video. So here we have a complete front brake caliper with the carrier and the bracket off of a 330. So we're only doing the front replacements like I said before. The rears do require more modification. So this video is just going to cover the whole front 330 brake upgrade. You also want new brake pads, new rotors, and a new sensor as well. You can even buy a complete remanufactured brake caliper uh, with the carrier and everything off of ECS Tuning uh, or other retailers like that. Or you can just go on your local classifieds, find someone that's parting out a 330, and just pick up a set of calipers. You will also need a lot of brake fluid since it's a good time to flush out all of your old brake fluid and re-bleed the brakes. So we'll start off by doing it since we are going to be compressing uh, the piston for the caliper. We're going, to, we're going to remove the brake fluid reservoir cap. That way no pressure gets built up and we don't risk anything else. So just loosen that up, pull it off, and you don't have to take it off completely, just have it off like that. Now we're going to start off by removing the 325 calipers, the rotors. We'll put the 330 rotor on. We'll change the calipers at the very last moment. That way we don't let too much air get into the brake system. We'll start by removing this bracket. In order to do so, get a pry bar or some kind of flathead, pry against the rotor. So what you have to do is you have to push this in and then this will pop out this way. Now since we're going to be removing this whole brake caliper and carrier assembly, you can just undo the two 16 millimeter bolts on the back for the caliper bracket and this will allow you to pull off the entire assembly. And these are 16 millimeter bolts. <laughs> now you can use a bungee cord or some zip ties to tie up the caliper. That way you don't have too much stress going on any of the brake lines. All right, with that out of the way, now we can pull off the rotor. The rotor is held in with a six millimeter hex set screw. All right, so now we're presented with one of the differences between the 330 brakes and the 325, 323, 328. So the back dust shield on the 330s is bigger. So if you wanted to really change out the dust shield and put the proper 330 size, what you would have to do is remove the whole wheel bearing and wheel hub and remove the bolts for the dust shield, put the new dust shield on, and then replace your wheel bearing and wheel hub. We're not gonna be doing that right now. Next time we have to do the wheel bearings, at that point I will change out the dust shield. But you can leave this dust shield on and it will not make a difference as far as the application of the brakes. Now let's go see the difference between the 325 and 330 rotors. So here's a 330 rotor. So you can see the difference right there. The 330 rotors are a lot bigger. It'll improve your braking performance. And if you did any kind of swap, so like on this wagon, we've done a 330 swap. So we do need more braking power. And this is the perfect match because 330 motor, 330 brakes. And you can put 330 brakes in the front without touching the rear. It might offset the brake bias a little bit more, but it will still work. It shouldn't be that big of a deal. Obviously, I would still recommend doing a 330 rear brake upgrade but we're gonna be doing an M3 rear end swap into the wagon eventually, so we're just not gonna bother with that for right now. 
All right, let's go ahead and put this rotor on. So we're gonna just clean up this whole mating surface since there's a little bit of rust on it. You could use a wire wheel or something of that sort. All right, so I went ahead and applied some grease, disc brake grease on the wheel hub itself so that way the rotor does not seize to it. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up the set screw with the set screw location on the hub. Then get your set screw. Screw it in. All right, so now comes the fun part. We're gonna be replacing the entire caliper assembly. You wanna start by removing the brake line off of this bracket. Just push it out, there's a rubber grommet on it. All right, so with that out, now you can follow the brake line up and you can see there is, there's a brake line fitting right on the top. So we're gonna release that. And here's what I was talking about with the brake lines being dry rotted. You can see how cracked these are. So you're gonna need some kind of drain pan or something to catch the brake fluid that pours out. Uh, for us, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be replacing this entire line. And in order to actually remove just this line from the brake caliper, you would still have to twist it around. So we're just gonna release it from the top and we're just gonna hook up the 330 for right now the, with the brake line that came with it. And we're gonna be doing a separate video on how to install stainless steel lines and bleeding the brakes. So we'll have that link down below. But for now, let's go ahead and unhook this line and then swap in the 330 one. So this is gonna be a size 11 fitting. And once you loosen it, you'll start seeing some of the fluid come out. So make sure you don't want your brake fluid reservoir to ever go empty, because if it does, then you're gonna to have to bleed the ABS cylinder as well. So you gotta be really quick with this setup. Try not to get any brake fluid on the painted surfaces either because brake fluid will eat through the paint. If you do get it on it, just hurry up and wipe it off. That way you don't mess up your paint. All right, so here's a 325 caliper with this carrier and everything. All right, we're just gonna take off the caliper from the carrier. Now you wanna try to clean up all of these surfaces as best as you can. We're just gonna hook up the caliper for right now with the stock line so the brake fluid stops leaking out and then we'll clean everything up. All right, so we're gonna clean up these caliper surfaces wherever the brake pad's gonna sit. Uh, once we clean it up, we can grease it. That way you don't hear any excess brake noise. All right, so we're gonna grease up all the contact surfaces. Now we can hook up the caliper carrier. Slide it in, get the two bolts that are on the back. All right, so now what you wanna do is we're gonna compress the, the caliper piston back. You could do this with the caliper off of the car or you can just loosen the bleeder screw, or if you have the actual brake line loose a little bit, that's fine as well. So that way you can just push all that old fluid back out. So you can use like a normal caliper uh, piston compressor, or you can use what I use, which is a porta puller, it just makes it easier for me. Now we're gonna grease up the brake pads.
Now the, cap, the, the pad with the metal clamps needs to go on the inside of the caliper piston. Now you can slide the actual caliper on. Now you want to clean up the guide bolt and grease, grease these as well before you can put them back in. And this guide bolt is a seven millimeter hex. All right, once it's greased up, you're gonna put it on the back of the caliper through the boot and just slide it in. Then we're gonna screw it in after both of them are in. Now you want to put this anti-squeak rattle clip back on. Alright, now before you finish everything else up, you want to clean anything off of the rotor itself. And you can use some brake cleaner over here to help you out with that. And go back over all of the bolts, make sure everything's nice and tight. All right, so now that all that's done, all that is left is to bleed the brakes. So we're also gonna be replacing these uh, brake lines with stainless steel lines. So we're gonna do that on a separate video, which will be linked down below. The only difference between the passenger and the driver side is the driver side has the brake pad wear sensor. So the wear sensor sits inside through this cavity right here inside the brake pad itself. So make sure that you route that the same way the old one comes off. And besides that, just put this rubber grommet back into the bracket for the brake line and you're good to go. And when you're bleeding the brakes, uh, it does help to have a power bleeder, which you can go watch in that video. We'll list everything that you would need. But besides that, that's it for this video. As you guys saw, it's a very easy brake upgrade for those without a 330. Um, and these brakes are significantly bigger and it will improve your braking performance. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you guys have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment down below or message me on Instagram at ShopLifeTV. Thanks for watching.